I'm honored to be here today with Mary Young, who's a candidate. Hello, Mary. Welcome. Hi, Raylan. Welcome to Hotel Elephant, as I call it. <laughs> Excellent. Can I leave? Huh? Can I leave? Uh, no, it's, it's not like, like the Hotel California. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, no. Once you check in, you can, or you can leave anytime you want. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't had enough coffee. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm excited about your candidacy. I'm just reading up on it, and I saw you the other night at the uh, environmental panel um, at the library. Yeah, smokestacks, smokestacks, tailpipes, and it's a good name. Yeah, it was smokestacks, tailpipes, and trash cans. Uh huh. Um, so, how has it been to run for council? Is it fun? Tiring? Well. Honestly, I started out terrified, uh -huh. um, and about at some point, I don't know exactly when that tipped, but I went from terrified to, hey, this is kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, I would think it would be, because you obviously care about community a lot, I would think it would be, um, after the initial bit, kind of fun, because you have to learn so much and get so involved, and I'm, I know you already are on the chair of the planning board. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. so you know a lot. A um, good friend of ours, we've actually interviewed him right here, is uh, Brian Bowen, uh -huh. um, who I know you serve with. Um, I do. Yeah. So what, um, you know, what issues are you passionate about, particularly, in terms of your hypothetical service? My hypothetical service. I am really passionate about transportation issues in general. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had started out wanting to uh, run for the RTD board. Mm -hmm. And I applied for RTD the board, is our bus uh, regional transportation yeah. district. Yes, yeah. I started out wanting to do that next year, uh -huh. and I actually applied when the vacancy became available earlier this year. I was one of uh, five finalists uh -huh. that were ch uh, cho chosen by the uh, Boulder County Commissioners. Mm -hmm. I didn't um, get appointed, and so I was planning on running next year. And at some point, I was convinced that I could actually accomplish more of my goals that were surrounding transportation issues by being on council. And one of those issues is um, transportation equity. Mm -hmm. You know, many of us um, walk around with multiple eco passes in our wallet. Mm -hmm. And I will often sit on the bus. I, I get around on bus and bike 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, I've ridden. That's great. I've ridden every single uh, bus route in Boulder, and mm -hmm. then some in Denver and other um, parts beyond. So I get a lot of an opportunities to see who's riding the bus and kind of observe what kind of fare they're paying. And the people that look like they can least afford it are actually paying full fare. Mm -hmm. And like I said, some of us are walking around with multiple eco passes in our wallet, and I just find that really unjust. So explain maybe to people who don't know what an EcoPass is and how could you have multiple or none? Okay. Yeah. Um, an EcoPass is an annual pass that is given to people um, under certain cases, um, whether you are a student at the uh, university or you work for the university, you work for the city. Um, I have one because of my service on planning board. And I have another one because of my job at Via Mobility Services. Hmm. Um, I used to have three, hmm. um, a neighborhood pass, which I haven't renewed in the last couple of years. Um, so that eco pass allows you to ride the bus as much as you want without having to pay a fare. Hmm. And it allows you to ride it regionally. So um, you can ride it from here to Denver without hmm. paying the $5 fare. Hmm. So round trip, that saves you 10 bucks each time right. you go to Denver. Right. And that, that like I said, that EcoPass is not available to everybody. Huh. It is available to um, also to people who pull together a neighborhood EcoPass. And that neighborhood EcoPass is really, really difficult to organize for. Huh. I know there's an effort going on right now in Whittier that's being um, um, pulled together by um, some members of the uh, Chrysalis Co-op, and they're just finding out how difficult it is. It's a lot of work, so it mm. takes a lot of dedication. 
How many neighborhoods have eco passes? You know, organized? I don't know how many neighborhoods there are that have organized. A lot of them have been around for a while, the ones that have organized. I, I know that there's only been a new one in the last, one new one in the last couple of years. Uh -huh. um, there are, um, well, I couldn't even take a guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, I there's, didn't even know there's they quite, really. quite a few. Yeah. yeah, I heard about it in a prior interview, but yeah, I've never had an eco pass. I always just, um, so I was talking about it with one of the other candidates. I never take the bus unless I'm going to DIA, um, mainly because I don't know how much it costs. I don't know how the fare, you know, just dumb reasons. I don't know if I need exact change, which I probably do, um, or where it goes. So even for someone like myself who maybe, uh, can afford it and um, should know better. It's it's sort of intimidating. Well, yeah. um, there's a term for bicyclists that are kind of like you. They're the yeah. interested but concerned. Yeah. And that is uh, true of a lot of people. Yeah. Um, the um, riding public transit is right behind. I think uh, fear of spiders as far as fear of <laughs> <laughs> things. So I have like no fear of it. It's just confusing. It's confusing. Yeah. Well, um, all you have to do is. Jump on a bus. If you have your eco pass, then you don't. You're, first of all, you're not worried about having the exact fare. Right. You jump on the bus. Well, I guess that's the thrust. Is not so much about me and my little concern about or confusion about buses, mm -hmm. but that if there was a eco pass for everybody, use would obviously go up. People would figure it out. People would take the plunge. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Um, if you are carrying around an eco pass in your wallet, you are five to nine times more likely. To yeah. use public transit, oh, so that's huge. Yeah, that's huge. There aren't yeah. very many things that are five to nine times um, more probable to add to your chances of doing something mm. than mm. an eco pass. Cool. Well, that's great. You cycle a lot too. I I cycle all the time, and one of my pet concerns, which I know a lot of people think about in Boulder, is um, separate bike lanes and more bike lanes, like just making it more accessible for families and for people who maybe. You know, I think cycling is intimidating for a lot of people. It sure is, and especially in Boulder, yeah. where there tends to be um, a culture of, you call it cycling, I call it bicycle commuting. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, the uh, paradigms that we deal with here in Boulder, because a lot of the people that actually ride are competitive, yeah. and they're wearing Lycra, and they're yeah. wearing yeah. jerseys, and when you go to other countries where the bicycle is more of a transportation um, mm -hmm. mode, mm -hmm. people are just dressed in street clothes. Yeah, There's no reason to I, change. I just bike downtown and back wearing this. Um, and that is, that's much more um, interesting and, and powerful uh, for, from my point of view and I think for any city is to get everybody comfortable commuting. And there are some efforts going yeah. on right now to, uh, on behalf of the city to try to get to that point. Uh -huh. There's a thing called uh, the Living Laboratory, which is conducting some um, experiments, if you right. want to call them that. Yeah, they're there's doing it right well down there. Down there, and there's also one really cool one on Baseline. There's mm -hmm. a stretch of uh, road just um, east of 30th, between 30th and... Um, I think it's, it ends somewhere before Mohawk. Mm -hmm. um, what they've done is they've laid down those little concrete barriers that use, um, that cars um, mm -hmm. stop against in parking lots. Mm -hmm. And those barriers are separating the travel, um, the automobile travel lanes from the bike lanes. And I've ridden on it. And That's it great. does, yeah, it does give you a little bit more of a sense of um, comfort. I yeah. would say it's comforting, yeah. but it, it gives you. A, a more of a sense of safety. Yeah. Really. Well, like when I bike, like in New York recently, you know, they have actual walls everywhere up for separate bike lanes. Not everywhere, but in a lot of places. And it's so relaxing. You know, it makes it feel like a, its own form of transportation. Yeah. Um, whereas here on Knight Street, which I use all the time, you know, cars pass you in the lane without the room to do so. Um, and I've been hit a couple times. You know, it's yeah. dangerous. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's the thing that right now as things stand um it is definitely a barrier i mean all of us who have been riding um, bicycle commuting for a long long time have hmm. been hit have yep. gone down have oh, yeah. had wheels run over whatever yep. i've had it happen to me several times yeah, me um, too. 
And that's just, you know, we're in that one little one percent that just keeps going no matter what. Yeah. Um, and so the yeah, you're shaky and traumatized. You're shaky, for but like you get up days. and you go, and yeah. then you're over it. But yeah. most people aren't that way, and yeah. that's what we have to address: is the folks that are, like I said, interested but concerned. Yeah, I would love to see it. Not to spend too much time on this, but I. I do feel like bicycling, in terms of equity, is huge. It's obviously, when I was a kid growing up here, my mom had no money, but we were able to bike every, everywhere. And, uh, you know, anyone in Boulder, if it's safe, almost anyone can, can bike, um, or bus, or whatever, if we can make it more accessible. Mm -hmm. That's um, true. It's the, and, you know, I've heard people say that the bus doesn't go where I want to go. Right. It does go where you want to go. It's just a matter of, again, another paradigm that we have to overcome. We have to think differently is you're not going to get there in five minutes. Actually, with the traffic the way it is sometimes, you're not going to get there anyway. And, yeah. you know, they have those races during bike week where somebody takes a bike, somebody takes a car, and oftentimes it's a tie, right? Oh, I do that with friends regularly. Like, we climb at the spot bouldering gym out on 32nd in Walnut downtown, and then we come downtown. And I always either beat them or tie. That's true. Because you have to think about parking, you know, all that. All that. Okay, we're back. We're moving past bicycling and transportation. What other issues um, maybe have we not touched on that you're passionate about? I am also passionate about trying to find housing choices that keep more dollars in our community. Mm -hmm we have some buildings that are going up and, and they provide a lot of housing. But I'm not so sure that um, they're rental units and I'm referring to uh, buildings that are going up at um, 30th and Pearl, mm -hmm. 3100 Pearl. Um, and they don't stay with the people in our community. They may be going to somebody that lives in the community, but it's, it's, it's a fairly centralized um, revenue opportunity for, um, for one person. And I would like to see more opportunities like, say, you here um, establish a little apartment in your basement yeah. or upstairs yeah. and can provide it um, more affordably to someone, you know, someone just out of college, sure. which is um, a demographic that we aren't very welcoming to. And that's been proven by a, um, a Knight Foundation report. Mm -hmm. that young people just coming out of college can't stay here though they might want to because they just simply cannot find housing and a lot of the housing opportunities that we're, bu we're building right now are going to require two thousand dollar a month rents that's not affordable wow. there are right now um, these these little units that I'm talking about are um, they're called in the in the uh, parlance are um, accessory dwelling units or ADUs. Mm -hmm. Most people just know them as little apartments in your house or behind right. your house. Mother-in-law apartment. Mother-in-law apartments yeah. and um, these units have a lot um, of, provide a lot of opportunity to meet a lot of our goals. Yeah. For instance, uh, we know that we have an aging population. Um, I talked about the uh, young folks um, coming out of college. Um, there are people that have um, adult children with disabilities mm. that would like them to have more independence um, and one of these kinds of apartments but would be really nice to have by their house. It would give uh, them a sense of independence yet the parents wouldn't have to be going off to across town to pick them up and drive them to their job or mm. whatever. Um, That's so, great. So it provides a lot of opportunities and it does um, also provide young families who might want to stay here um, an opportunity to have an income that subsidizes their mortgage, for instance. Sure. Um, an older adult that wants to age in place, as they call it. Um, and I think, when I think about age in place, I think about, I want to stay in my house, I want to stay in my neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and so this kind of um, housing opportunity would allow an older adult to create one of these units um, and um, either live in the main house and rent out the small unit or vice versa. Now, we can do that now, um, but right now you can only do so in certain um, zones around the city, You're limited, and it's limited to 10% within a certain neighborhood. Hmm. And then uh, the kicker is that um, you have to have 
provide um, off-street parking if you have one of these. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're not allowed to in this neighborhood. It, it the um, the hill would be somewhat problem problematic because uh -huh. um, the nature of um, you know some of the the issues that the hill is already. Um, hmm. dealing with I would think it would be ideal to do it here because right now without any of that kind of flexibility every other house is stuffing five or six students illegally into one house every pretty much every house I know of and I know a lot of my neighbors right well it depends you know it would really depend on um, your point of view hmm. if um, whether or not that would make sense because well, it would just reduce the you know the the houses with way too many kids in there. Right, think. right. But then you more, would have, yeah. um, you know, I'm I'm talking about um, issues um, between uh, permanent residents and then the student housing. Right. There's a lot of tension there, and um, sure. I, I mean, I'm a permanent like this, resident. So. Yeah, something like that would would add to right. that kind of tension. Yeah, um, I don't know. I would I would personally say that um, from my limited perspective, mm -hmm. the tension for me is that I have five students living illegally next door, you know? And if it was reduced, if there was more flexibility generally, it's sort of like with legal marijuana. If mm -hmm. you actually provide a, a legal avenue for more density mm -hmm. than the illegal density, which creates these crazy parties and all these things all the time. Um, and just, you know, five SUVs trying to park in two parking mm -hmm. spots mm -hmm. um, would be reduced. but. I don't know that much about it. Well, that, you know, I, I referred to uh, the provision of off-street parking. And yeah. That would be something that would be yeah. somewhat problematic in this Right, neighborhood. I see. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and um, are are the other candidates or other council, counselors uh, passionate about that issue, too? Or do you, you know, see this, has been a, this has been an issue that has been um, brought forth um, in prior councils. Mm. And it hasn't gotten enough traction um, and I'm not exactly certain why but I do think that because of um, other demographic issues that are that we're confronted with this could be the prime time uh -huh, and I'm right. referring to um, older adults who want to age in place for example and um, just um, climate change this, yeah. this is a way to um, add um, more population within areas that don't have as much population without changing the character of the neighborhood. And I think that's yeah. really important yeah. to be respectful of neighborhoods. That's, that's a, a very deep value of mine, yeah. is to be respectful of neighborhoods and the character and the values. Each neighborhood will have different kinds of values. And as you go around talking to different people in different neighborhoods, you really get that sense. Mm -hmm. um, and what, uh, you know, in our remaining minutes, what are other issues are you passionate about? Well, you mentioned um, the arts, and um, I, would, I really see that as yeah. an opportunity um, for us to be able to um, get more people, more tourism, more visitors, um, more... Um, occupancy, higher occupancy rates during the down season in our hotels and um, I, I am somewhat concerned that there's more hotels that are going to come online and that'll be great for August but what happens in February? Yeah. And, um, and so we need to think about what kinds of opportunities we have to be able to bring more visitors during that off season. And I think that the arts would provide that. Um, did you know that um, in Boulder we have the eighth highest concentration of artists per capita? Wow. Behind LA, New York, and um, Santa Fe. Huh. I did and, not. I yeah. don't think anyone knows that. Yeah. And I feel so, like people generally, visitors, friends of mine, um, or artists who come here struggle in a way to you know, find an artist community here. And I know there's a lot of great events, but... Uh, I agree with you that you know the more we could kind of support that and nurture that. Be I think helpful. we could. I think it's a hugely untapped asset. Mm. Um, yeah. And you know, it's it, it it goes. I sat down and um, spoke with um, Charlotte from the uh, Boulder County Arts Alliance, and she was saying that yeah. um, we have a lot of artists that struggle here, 
And a lot of it has to do with just our values. Our values tend to be um, heavily leaning on the outdoors, as yeah. you know. Um, and so I think that we could do something to kind of combine the two, perhaps, um, sure. have more interesting street art. We have no street art in this town. Yeah. Um, I love murals. I would yeah. like to see more murals. In fact, if you go to my website, um, I'm sitting right in front of, a, not sitting, but riding my bike uh, right in front of a mural. And I uh, have been really surprised at how many people don't know where that is. Huh. Do you know where that is? I didn't see the photo. Oh, okay. Which well, was the mural of? It's the mural of, um, I think there's seven or eight um, species of trout um, that are painted on um, an entrance ramp to the Goose Creek Pike Bike Path right at 30th right. and just uh, right. north of uh, Pearl. Yeah. Uh, seven or eight of uh, the species of trout that we find in our uh, waterways here. Huh. That's cool. And it's a really cool mural. And yeah, there's some good street art, I guess, on the bike paths. You know, there's some of the few murals, really. Yeah, you know, murals. The big waves, I don't it's know. relatively new. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some, some good murals. And yeah. so I think we have an opportunity to um, use art to, again, like um, the housing, the, the accessory dwelling unit um, issue that brings together a lot of our um, community values in one opportunity, we can do the same thing with art because we could do things like combine our um, outdoor culture into artistic expression. Right. We could um, then take a, a mural, for example, and um, combine it with um, being more inclusive of uh, other cultures and, mm -hmm. and work together in that way. So I think, I think that the arts provide opportunities for us as well to accomplish our you know, we talk about the three-legged stool, the social, economic, and environmental uh -huh. goals like that we that. have. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Mary. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to meet you.